Hello boys, are you ready for a new science lesson? If you are, here we go. This is teacher Alejandro Valdez and welcome back again. Hello, you catch me here working in my science lab. Uh, boys, today in our lesson, but this is not the proper environment that I want. So I'm going to change it. One, two, three. This is perfect, yes. You know why this environment is perfect? Because we are going to talk about plants. But the topic, the, the proper topic is reproduction in flowering plants. So I want you to watch uh, some pictures that I'm going to show you, pay attention. You are going to look some pictures and you have to guess what animal is shown in these pictures. Here we go. What do you see? This is the, fir the first picture. Any idea? What is this? What can it be? Mm. Maybe it's something familiar for you. Ready? Yes, you're right. It's a bee. And the question is, why is the bee covered in yellow dust? This is the question that you will be able to answer at the end of this lesson, okay? Let's check the learning objectives for this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to identify the parts of the flower and their role in the processes involved in sexual reproduction of flowering plants. Most probably, you have seen a lot of flowers around you. Um, they may look different, but all of them have common characteristics. The main parts of the flowers are the male part and the female part. In the female parts, we can find three mainly parts, the stigma, the style, and the ovary. The stigma is positioned at the tip of the style. The flower is fertilized and when the pollen lands on the stigma. The style is something like a tooth that holds the stigma at the tip. It also connects the stigma with the ovary. And the ovary contains the ovulus. The main parts of the flower are the anther and the filament. The anther contains the pollen and it's also known as a pollen head. And the filament is the part of the flower that supports the anther. Pollination happens when the pollen passes from the anther to the stigma. It can be in the same flower or from one flower to another. Now, are you able to guess why the bee was covered in yellow dust? Flowering plants need to be pollinated and are the insects, birds or wind who help to the flower in this process, transporting the pollen required, which is the yellow dust. That's why some flowers are large and colorful, because they have a nice scent that attracts insects and birds to them. 
So boys, can you tell me why the bee at the beginning of this video was covered in yellow dust? Yes, because they are very important in this process. Because they are in charge to transport the dust from one flower to another, or in the same flower. And remember, when I use the word dust, I'm referring to the pollen. What are the steps of fertilization in flowers? Number one, when the pollen grains land on the surface of the stigma, each pollen grain produces a tube called the pollen tube. Number two, this tube grows down from the stigma through the style to the ovary. The ovary of the flower contains ovules. Inside each ovule is the egg cells. And number three, the pollen tube guides the male reproductive cells from the pollen grain down to the ovule. When the pollen tube reaches the ovule, a male reproductive cell fuses with the egg cell. This process is called fertility fertilization. The picture shows this yellow circle that is the pollen. This pollen travels for the pollen tube known as style. This brown dot represents the ovary, which contains the ovules. When the pollen fuses with the egg, occur the fertilization. The picture below, we can see an apple flower. Once the flower is fertilized, the petals wither and drop off, and the ovary swells and the apple is formed. Amazing, don't you think? Bien muchachos, en esta ocasión aprendimos eh, acerca de la reproducción sexual de las plantas con flores. Y partimos la clase identificando las partes femeninas y las partes masculinas de la planta. En cuanto a las partes femeninas tenemos el estambre, el estilo y los ovarios, que en inglés son eh, stigma, style and ovary. Las partes masculinas corresponden a las anteras y los estambres, que en inglés son anthers and filaments. También aprendimos acerca de la polinización, que esta ocurre cuando el polen es transferido desde la antera hasta el estigma, y que puede ser en la misma flor o que puede venir el polen desde otra flor. Algo muy importante a tener en cuenta es que los grandes polinizadores son los insectos, las aves y también el viento, porque a través de ello el polen viaja eh, de flor en flor. Finalmente hablamos acerca de cómo ocurre la fertilización en las plantas, desde que llega el polen hasta que este polen se junta con el óvulo en el ovario de la planta. Well, boys, the end of the video has arrived. See you next week, and don't forget to give me a like. Bye.